Dispute. We're going to continue with the GA for the minute. John Bond, good morning to you. Good morning. We've just been trying to make cases for Mayo here. I don't know how much of that you heard. I think maybe largely unsuccessfully. Tactically, if you're managing Mayo uh, tomorrow, what are you doing? I would try and keep it very, very tight early on. Um, as we know from last year when we played Dublin, that third quarter, it's where they absolutely blitzed us with two goals. Conor Callum in particular started off that second half and the game was over. We had kept it very, very tight up to the half halfway mark and just in the space of three or four minutes, we lost it. Yeah. I know I, I hear a lot of talk um, from the hurlers and, um, and other GA teams in the last number of weeks and months is to try and take it in segments, get to the first water break, uh, break intact, get to the half time, and get to the, the last water break, break. And if you're in contact with Dublin, go down to the home, the home stretch, well, then you might have a chance. We, ju we just might spook them. A little bit of pressure come on, come on Dublin for that six in a row. Who knows? But that would, be, that would be the theory. Of course, we know all about theories down here in Mayo. <laughs> Do you go gung ho just focusing on your own thing, John, or do you like we've just been discussing there, for example, like the success of 2017 and hammering Kilkenny and hammering uh, Fenton? Like Lee Keegan obviously did a big job there. They tweak it around at half time, obviously, and I managed to turn things around. But um, yeah, so how much of that do Mayo or James Horn focus in on what's important for Mayo, and how much of an eye do they tactically then have to keep an eye on Dublin? Look, the reality is when we, when we do a, a quick review in the last. Um, since 2012, we played Dublin eight times. Um, we've lost five, won one, and drew two. Now, in those eight encounters, there's been very, very little between the teams, with the exception of last year. And last year kind of spooks me a little bit. And the fact our, our semi final has created a little bit of confusion for Mayo heads as well, because we were so brilliant in patches of that game. And then the ordinariness kicked in and go down the home stretch. And so we're a little bit confused. If we, and I do believe we'll keep it very, very tight and we'll be a lot a cage here going into the, uh, the North Island final. And it's good in a way that James Horn has had the two weeks, albeit I don't know what you can do in, in winter training to address some of the problems. But certainly video analysis and all that kind of stuff will have been uh, focused in on as regards keeping our defensive formation tight. I think we'll be a lot tighter. Uh, Lee and our full back line, in particular Chris Barrett and Ushi Mullen, one of the new kids in the block, look very, very exposed. But I know if you're playing the full back line and your half back line has abandoned and the work rate isn't uh, going in out around, around the, the middle third, well, then it's very, very easy to be exposed in our full back line. But there's a big question mark down here about the vulnerability or, or, and the perceived vulnerability of our full back line. I don't think we can go toe to toe with them. I, uh, Look at we look at Fenton. He's playing the football of his life. You look at the likes of uh, the, um, McDade, who's after come into the scene this year, albeit uh, he's been around the scene for quite a, a time. But he's had a huge impact on this Dublin team. They're new guys that they brought into the team as well. The Buglers of this world and the Smalls. They've been absolutely introduced in a seamless fashion. Now they haven't been really, really tested to date. I don't want to be disrespectful in any way to the West Meads, Leashes, or Cavins or even Meath, with the complete capitulation of Meath, which kind of shocks me. But Dublin haven't been really, really tested. That intensity that is associated with mayor teams during Crow Park, if we can bring that back into this uh, encounter on Saturday evening, well, then we might, just might have a chance. But we've got to up the levels of intensity big time based on what we've witnessed so far uh, from Mayo. But I would say, uh, in a nutshell, I, we wouldn't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Yes, we could do with Aitre O'Shea contesting kick-outs around the middle of the field with Brian Fenton. Nonetheless, he's playing so well and he's such a big threat of the forward line. Lee Keegan, I'd love to have him in the half-back line. I think Ushi Mullen would be a better half-back, but the reality is we're stuck for cornerbacks. And I think Ke Lee is a little bit uncomfortable in there. I wouldn't like to see uh, Chris Barrett uh, playing the full-back line, or uh, full-back, I'd like him in the corner. But look at... We're just, we have what we have, and that's, I think, we, I get the impression we're trying to uh, square pegs in, in round circles or round circles and square pegs. There's a bit of that going on with the mayor team at the moment. Right. With the exception, then, that they can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dublin, what do you do as a manager if you accept that? Like, what is the, the tactical tweak that you make? Well, the obvious, the obvious one uh, is, obviously, uh, Kevin McLaughlin plays a sweeper back in, full, uh, in front of the forward line. I think we've got to deploy a more defensive strategy against Dublin. They are a huge threat. Dean Rock is playing super football. I think four points from play in the first half against um, Cavan the last day. And 
you know, in the previous year as Dean, like I mean, was noticed for his free free take, and I think he missed the first one against Cavan. Cavan must have thought it was going to be an off day for uh, for him, and they were in with a chance. Small in the corner, even though he didn't have a brilliant game against Cavan, but my God, he's such a pocket rocket. He's zero to sixty miles per hour. So I mean, he just wins the ball in front. A great man to win a mark. But when he stands up and looks at the defender, he drives straight at you. We can't afford to expose the poor back line. So I would imagine we, we, we would keep it very, very tight at the back. And I certainly would see us deploying a sweeper. Not quite sure will Dublin treat us with that kind of respect. Our full forward line has been playing super football. The problem we have, and I feel, is trying to get quality ball into a full forward line quickly. I just feel that that might be a problem because around the midfield sector, while I'm a great fan of Conor Loftus. I saw him playing super football as a minor in under-21. And his mid midfield par uh, partner, Matthew Wan. Two new Cubs playing midfield. It's a huge ask for them to go out and to really contest and win the midfield battle. And if we're not winning the midfield battle, well, then we're going to be under extreme pressure. So, yes, we've got to get bodies in around there. That's where I would love to see the likes of Lee Keegan contest and break and ball. If we could get it on the floor. And the way he used to at uh, attack the ball was immense. We're missing him. We're missing the likes of Colin Boyle, who was fantastic, playing at six or in the wing half-back position, uh, where he would just gobble up breaking ball and be a, a threat going forward as well. So there's lots of little problems, but I just feel that if we play tight, play an extra, an extra high, um, or play a half-forward line deeper coming into midfield and just not expose our full-back line, I think that's the way to go. That's interesting on Keegan. Like, would you not just play him out at half-back then? Because... We saw what happened when he was in on Conor Callaghan last year. He got torn asunder at times. Like, there's evidence there, John, as you say, that he's so strong going forward if you have him close enough to midfield. But we've seen last year as well, he can be weak enough in the full back line. Surely this is a very calculated gamble that James Horne could take tomorrow. It is. And he looks, if his body language is anti the go by, he looks uncomfortable in the corner. I, everybody down here that knows anything about football would suggest. His best position has always been as a half-back. You could play him middle of the field. Right? You could play him centre half-back. But the reality is we're stuck for players to fit into our full-back line. You look at our half-back, we've got Owen McLaughlin, a young footballer from Westport who was, I think, a national junior um, cyclist there a couple of years ago. I remember watching him three or four years ago playing in a minor county final, and I leaned down to the Westport boy in front of me and I said, who is this guy? Now, he didn't have the, a gr great skill set, but the, I mean, he has improved so much. But he's not a cornerback. Um, with Stephen Cohn has played in the corner. I think he started off corner back last year against Dublin. But the reality is, I think Lee is in the in the full back line by default because we're mm. just short. We've lost a couple of guys in the last couple of years. Owner Dunhu from Belmullet, um, Harrison, another big loss to us. So we're just stuck for guys to play in the full back line, and I think that's why Lee is back there. But that, nonetheless, James Horn might spring a surprise and throw him out around the middle of the field. Who knows? Uh, Joe Brodie was making the point this week that Aidan O'Shea hasn't really performed at his expected level in an All-Ireland final. Why has that been? Has there been a reason in terms of the way Mayo have set up in these All-Irelands that hasn't got the best out of Aidan O'Shea? You can't argue with that judgment, and, and Joe Brodie is absolutely right because the facts and the statistics are there. And the reality is it's down to the opposition and the quality of the opposition. I mean, who's going to pick him up on Sunday? It could be Philly McMahon. I mean, they've had battles before. I saw Philly coming on in the last number of minutes against uh, against Cavan. He certainly looked uh, quite impressive when he came in in the full back line. So it's very much dependent uh, on the quality of ball. If you're getting a, a supply into your full forward line, quality ball like we did in some of the games of the Champions this year, where I, I thought Aidan O'Shea's work rate improved beyond recognition. Killian O'Connor, similarly, he's played super football and they look extremely fit. But I mean, if you're getting lots of ball and quality ball in there and, uh, with regularity, well, then you can do damage. I mean, the chances are there will be times on, on Saturday evening when the three in our full forward line, young Tom Conroy, Killian and Aidan O'Shea, assuming he's going to play there, will be standing with their hands with their hips. That's a problem. I mean, if we get lots of ball into it, Aidan O'Shea, he certainly can do damage. Can we get that ball into them? That's a problem. Hmm. How long will they wait for... How long will they wait, John? I suppose the other thing, isn't it? Like, Owen's already been talking this morning about the fact that Dublin could turn it on and come at you for a five or ten minute spell and just blitz the game, and that can come at any point. How long do they wait when they see that happening? I know Aidan himself has been on with us over the last couple of weeks saying that he prefers to stay inside, but there will come a point in the game where James Horne will start to get sweaty palms about maybe moving him out. Absolutely. Likewise with uh, um, likewise with Killian, he he can play very very deep as well. And 
Look, if the ball is not coming in and you're, you're, you're leaking scores, well, then you've got to do something. And that might just be an instinctive thing where the boys find themselves drifting out to the half-forward line. The next thing, they're out around the middle of the field and you might have only one inside the full forward line, Tommy Curry on his own. So it could become difficult. I just hope and pray that it doesn't. Um, I'm, I'm just reliant on the fact that uh, Dublin and Mayo bring the best out in each other, with the exception of uh, uh, that 10-minute blitz in the second half of last year's encounter in the semi-final. I'm just hoping we can go toe-to-toe -to, -toe to them and that we get a huge championship performance out of our, out of our fellas. Um, you know, look, at, I, I, I do suspect we, we will be in trouble um, at periods in the game. And uh, then, of course, you look over your shoulder and I'm, someone remarked to me yesterday evening that uh, doesn't Desi Fur look so cool and calm on the sideline, why wouldn't you be when your your average winning score in the championship this year is 17 points? It's very very easy to re, to look as relaxed as he does. I've never had that. I've never had the comfort of looking so cool and calm on a sideline. But I mean, when you look over your shoulder and things are going any way awry, or the work performance is not coming from any single any single line of that Dublin team, and everybody's talking about the relentless work rate. When you like uh, um, uh, you have Costello and you have Paul, Paul Mannion. And uh, you have Kevin McManamum and you have Philly McMahon and you have uh, guys of that ilk sitting on the line. You're going to get a huge work intensity from the forward line. Otherwise, they'll get the curly, curly finger. Mm. Fortunately, we don't have that luxury. Tom Parsons came on the last day. It's fantastic to see him coming on to a, onto a mayor team after the horrific injury he had a couple of years ago. And I'm uh, personally delighted, as we all are, to see that. But you look at like, Keith Higgins, he didn't get any game time the last day. I thought he might. He must have been playing well or he might have a niggle of a hamstring injury. He only got a couple of minutes, a little cameo at the end of the game, uh, Connacht final against Galway. So our, the depth in our squad is not there right now. We all are delighted and thrilled to see the young fellas coming onto this team. We talked about Oshie Mullen, Owen McLaughlin and Tommy Conroy in particular. Matthew Wan is back on the team regularly and Conor Loftus. That is the freshness that Mayo have. I just think it might be a little bit too early for these guys, and we certainly don't have the real depth and quality of our bench that Dublin have. Like on that point, there's there may all have very little options in that same way that Dublin might have. Like if they start Philly, for example, that might catch people a little bit by surprise, and Mayo don't really have that option. So the only other kind of a rabbit from the hat thing that they might have is to do something positionally. And just back on that point about Ed O'Shea, the fact that he's played so much inside, the fact that he's been very uh, vocally telling everybody that's where he wants to play this year. Are we getting rope a dope here a bit, John, that, that Mayo might actually spring something on, on Saturday night and maybe that might be it? Well, I, I, I think the, the analysis that takes place in, in the modern inter-county football is so intense. Every single eventuality is discussed and planned in advance. So there's no such thing as a big surprise or a shock. I was standing on the sideline myself a number of years ago when a certain manager in the Connell final uh, put 16 into the... Uh, into the parade to say hello to the president at the time. We saw Gerard Lachnan years ago doing something similar with, with the hurling team in the North Ireland final. That day is gone because there's no such thing as a, a, as a rabbit out the a hat anymore because uh, everybody uh, involved in management um, you know, talks about and plans for the what-if scenario. So Aidan O'Shea possibly, I mean, the big issue and talking point down here, and I know it has been amongst the media as well, is about the kickout strategy. And if Dublin go full court press and push, push right up on our kickouts and don't afford uh, David Clark to go short with a kickout, that means the ball is hanging in the air. And unfortunately, David's kickout is not the laser like trajectory of Robbie Henley, for argument's sake. And I can understand. That argument has been discussed long and hard, but uh, mm. if if we have kickouts just hanging in the air, you would suspect that the likes of Howard or or a Brian Fenton would just gobble those uh, kickouts up, and that's why we might need the likes of Aidan O'Shea to be contesting. If they if Dublin push up on our kickouts, which I suspect they will, then we might have to look at Plan B, and that would be deploying Aidan O'Shea to go and bully and try and get in around and under a Brian Fenton in particular and get the ball on the floor to give the chance of picking up scraps. John, what has County Mayo been like this week compared to, say, September 1996, for example? You know, should we miss the craziness and madness of it all? Like, I mean, everything is, is virtual. You're afraid to step outside the door in case you bump into anybody. Everything is, on, everything is by Skype or uh, WhatsApp groups, and uh, that's where we're reading all the messages. And we miss the fun and the crack. You know, this time of the year, ordinarily, you'd have functions and gigs and pubs, two tickets and raffle tickets for here. You'd have fellows traveling from Belmullet to Balladrine. 
if they heard if they heard there was a rattle of a ticket going on and uh, a little fundraiser was going on for the mayor team and you know the national schools and bands. I know I recall years past, like I mean the national school, local national school here, parading around the mall and Castle Bar playing their uh, tunes and what have you. We miss all that. I mean it's not the same. This there's going to be an asterisk after this year's championship, unfortunately. But nonetheless, we'll take it. it uh, the weekend action has been brilliant. I was personally, I didn't think it had happened. I wasn't in favour of it. I thought there might be a danger of us being exposed, players and, and management exposed when we were congregating to train. Thankfully, we've got the games going. And th every single e weekend, and I know you talked earlier about the ladies' football, I have seen some wonderful, wonderful uh, girls' uh, um, football matches. They've been absolutely superb. Uh, and I've taken a great interest in watching those games on Sunday as well. So... We've been blessed to have weekend uh, TV action, and I just applaud the GA for, for putting them on. We're just grateful. But uh, no, the fun and the excitement that Mayo in particular associates with, it's, uh, it's missing it, and we long for it. And uh, I hope we get an opportunity to get things back to normal sometime in the future. And, and the joy that goes with it as well is something that perhaps doesn't go appreciated too often. Kevin McStay wrote a, a brilliant column this week about how Mayo fans have gone through obviously a lot of pain ultimately when it comes to All-Ireland Finals but those journeys have been incredible. They're on another one this year where a lot of people perhaps didn't expect them to get back to the All-Ireland Final. There is a sense of great privilege to be a Mayo supporter I'd imagine John. Look at I, I grew up um, as a young fellow the decade of the 70s and uh, my memory and Kevin alluded to it in that article the 1975 um, Connell final, which we lost by um, um, in a replay to Sligo. I never saw um, Mayo playing the championship in uh, in Crow Park in the 70s because we didn't win the single provincial title. In the last 10 or 12 years, despite the turmoil and the grief and the sadness of losing losing finals, I, I am glad, I rejoice in the fact that we're going to these games. I'm just so thrilled that we're getting to compete in the finals and there's no guarantees that we, we will ever win one. The reality is you know, that it's not an exact science. So we can't say, look, these young guys are coming through, we're going to win an all Ireland title for May on the next couple of years. That may not happen because the Dublins are there, the Tyrones and the Kerrys, etc. But look, at what we miss as well is, is, is the guys travelling from overseas, from Chicago, Boston, New York, all around the UK and Europe. You would see them coming in the droves and the excitement that the, uh, those guys returning home uh, for an all Ireland final is something that's quite unique. And look, at everybody recognises there's something weird and wonderful about Mayo supporters, and I'm privileged to have witnessed it myself. There's, they're fantastic. And, you know, they come out of Crow Park on, on Sundays having they suffered another uh, defeat to, in, a, in a final or a semi-final, and you hear that with never ever again, and they're the first looking and chasing down the ticket. That's the way it'll always be, because there's something special about our Mayo support. And, I know God knows uh, Crow Park and the GA recognise that because uh, I know when I was bringing our teams in the past to Dublin, every hotel in the country, in, in Dublin wanted us because a Mayo crowd prior to a game or post game was the equivalent of six Armas or seven Tyrones as regards uh, um, money behind the bar. So <laughs> yeah, we miss, we're missing that bit of crack, but nonetheless, we're privileged to have it. And for the same reason, John, almost like the, the importance of it then for Mayo people at home and across the globe. And I'll be honest and say, I think for every, every non-dub who fits the same sort of target, like it'd be, it'd be a monstrous lift for everybody if, and I'm not in the slightest bit anti-Dublin, but if Mayo could get it done. Oh, I mean, it'd just be wonderful. Like, I mean, we're, we're so privileged uh, that these boys have provided with so much entertainment. And I would love the likes of the... Uh, the Lee Keegans and the Colin Boyles, the Tom Parsons, to see, you know, the way he he was carried off a pitch two years ago, and he's come back there competing to get on that team. I, I would just be honoured and delighted uh, as a mayor person if it would happen. As you were right to say, um, the whole country would rejoice. You see the way Chicago's lit up and the green and red all around Europe, New York colours, and yeah, there's great support there for Mayo because. There's a, you know, there's a, a poor, poor old Mayo, you know, there's a, a bit of sympathy out there for us. God knows we won't, we don't want that. But uh, mm. let's hope we have a great contest on Saturday. We compete right to the end. And if we're privileged to be in the winner's enclosure, well, certainly we, we will rejoice in our own quite little way down here in, in Casa Bar and Bell and and around the place. Yeah, I don't think sympathy is the right thing personally. I think that unqualified success is what Mayo have had over the last few years, albeit not getting over the line, it still has to represent success. Two weeks ago, you're thinking logic dictates Dublin are going to get it done. At 24, 30 hours out, have you started to convince yourself otherwise? 
Yeah, I'm, I, I'm getting a little bit desperate here. I'm running around to my friends again. I'm trying to organise a, a cup of coffee to see has have things changed. And we do that quite regularly here with a bunch of guys, Willie, Joe Padden and Martin Kearney and uh, Tom O'Reilly, Henry Gavin, guys that would have played the game. And we have bisected and dissected this thing. And someone posed a question the other day, you know, when you look down to the Mayo team and the Dublin team individually, how many players have we on the Mayo team that are individually better than the, his opponent on the Dublin team. Unfortunately, not too many. But look at it doesn't work that way. The collective cohesion and the drive and the passion that Mayo bring uh, to Dublin. I'm just hoping that it bubble to the surface with the sky blue jersey. And uh, Martin Kearney made a very good point last night. He said, for some reason, if we were playing Kerry uh, um, on Saturday evening, tomorrow evening, I wouldn't give us the same chance. But for, so, for some reason, despite their brilliance, and they are superb, one of the best teams that ever graced Croke Park, this Dublin team, um, and individually brilliant. Their skill set is just enormous. Their pace and their power, athleticism, all of that. They've, they've got it all. But for some reason, when Mayo come out to play Dublin, the last encounters, with the exception of that one last year, but in seven out of the last eight, we have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with them in a manly way. And I expect a manly performance from Mayo tomorrow. And if we get that, well, who knows? We might be in the shake-up, go down the home stretch. A fluky goal. We conceded two own goals, I think it was in 2016, when we were beaten by a point. We've had a, a lot of bad luck in Court Park. Maybe our luck um, might turn. And miracles, it's a time of the year for miracles, and we have knock here, as I said last night, in Mayo. Who knows? I'm, uh, I'm sold. John, you've whetted the appetite brilliantly. Thanks a million. Best of luck over the weekend. Our oh, best, guys. Thanks very much. John Mann on the line. I really am ready for throwing now. Yeah, God, that, that is, uh, that's class. As much as you can get excited for an All-Ireland in these circumstances, that'll, that'll let me do it.